Hey, Stewards Chapel, this is Brother Don Pearson and Don Counts, and we are here at the church's office, and this is Thursday's devotion, and we are continuing our look at walking worthy of our calling in the Lord Jesus in the next year, in this coming year. I want us to go over to Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 25, 26, and, and, and maybe even on down into chapter 6. So let's just read. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in, a, in, in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourselves, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now, through the years I've been at Stewart's Chapel on, I don't know, at least a few occasions, I've been led to this passage for either a Bible study or a sermon. As I've thought about what it's going to look like for me to walk worthy of the calling that Christ has for me in the next year, I thought about this passage. You see, in Galatians, Paul, will, Paul uses the word walk often. Uh, sometimes he uses it in the sense of the individual in the way he sh is to live. But in verse 25 and and even a little bit before that, there's a transition in the way that he uses the word walk. In verse 25, the, the word walk in the Spirit could, could be changed. It could be changed to march in the Spirit. And the idea of let us stresses the idea that he's no longer talking about my individual walk, but our walk, our our, our corporate march. The idea was that of a soldier that was in formation who was marching towards a destination of battle and how those soldiers needed to be marching in a certain way, whether they, whether they were Greek hoplite soldiers or Roman soldiers or even American soldiers. They're on their way to a mission and there's a certain way they are to march. They marched prepared, conscious of one another. The march may seem to go long, and in that sense, some trip, as verse 1 of chapter 6 would say, are overcome in a, like a snare, a trespass. They, they, they become tripped up, and the other ones are to bear them up there to pick them up. Others just become weary, and they pick them up. If I'm going to walk worthy of my calling in the next year, if you and I are going to walk worthy of the calling that we share together, we got to be more than just out for a jog. We, this is not a single person walking out there. We're going to have to do this together. We're, we need to march in formation, each of us headed towards the destination, not bothering, not provoking, but helping and encouraging one another to, to walk worthy. That's what Paul is doing in Ephesians. He even says, I'm a prisoner. I walk worthy. Now, he says to you, you need to join me in this march. You need to march worthy. Um. Uh, God has a mission that he has sent us on. Now, I've said this already. I want to say it again. I am not pursuing a destination. I am following a person. And during this next year, I'm going to have to remind myself of that often. But I'll have to remind you of that often. Because you see what happens when you get in formation and you start marching, if you're not careful, you forget the one who's in front that you're supposed to be following. And it becomes all about the mission. Well, the mission's not the main thing, my brothers. Following Christ is the only way you and I will walk or march worthy. We need each other. We can't do this alone. 
Love you, my brothers.